About a year and a half ago, the Sonic movie was released to the world. Man, a year and a half. Has it been that long already? I'm getting old. Look, I'm thinning. I remember the journey to the lead up of the Sonic movie. It was a wild ride with the poster to the first trailer to all the reactions. I'll never forget it. But that's a topic for another day. What matters now is the final product itself. When I first saw the movie, I remember really liking it. It wasn't mind blowing or anything, but it was enjoyable. And a lot of people seem to agree. It did well enough at the box office and we have a sequel on the horizon. And we're sure to get a trailer soon. Hell, it probably might even be out by the time this video is completed. So we have a lot to look forward to but i haven't seen this movie since its release in theaters actually that was the last movie i saw in theaters and seeing how things are going the sequel will probably be the first movie i see in theaters since well anyway i decided to re-watch the movie and review it for you guys so let's go ahead and take a look okay before we start i will apologize for the visual structure of this video i know it's not exactly the most appealing to look at but i've heard horror stories of movie reviewers and dealing with movie companies and frankly i'd rather not go through the headache so pray forgive the discourtesy of the lower visual quality the movie opens up in green hill zone and well it looks great unfortunately we don't stay here for long because after this part we're like immediately thrown into the real world and that's a bit disappointing like you guys give us a taste of what an incredibly faithful sonic movie with locals and characters and then you just take that away from us it's like taking away a delicious meal right before you're about to eat it we meet a very young sonic and meet his caretaker sonic <laughs> that's that's not her name long claw who tells sonic that you know he can't be running around because you know what if someone sees him the power he has there will always be people after him for it and immediately after she says this the echidna tribe comes along and attacks them and long claw sends sonic away as she has probably a very gruesome death off screen this opening is pretty good it establishes sonic's world his situation and has some cool references to the game that might even play a role in the upcoming sequel which is exciting long claw is a captivating character and we understand why sonic is on on earth by himself all done in less than a few minutes it doesn't really waste your time throwing you into the plot as i mentioned i am sad that we don't get to see more of green hill but whatever it won't kill me i'll survive we jump forward about a decade into the future and see sonic leaving in green hills you can barely tell the difference and sonic has been on looking the people of green hills where he stays hidden in his little cave he made for himself he seems to have especially taking a liking to tom here also known as donut lord i don't really know why sonic is fond of him in particular after we learn about Sonic as a living conditions, he then goes to the baseball court to play a game of baseball with himself since he saw other kids doing it and wanted to join in somehow. And this ultimately leads to a really great scene with Sonic really getting into it. He wins against, um, himself and when he goes in for a high five he then remembers that he is alone and in a state of despair starts running in circles as emotion builds up and like just shoots out causing a blackout this is a great scene it really shows how all these years of loneliness have had a great negative effect on him and how he desperately wants to have friends i also want to bring up the old design here real quick I, yeah i know the horse has been beaten to death but I think this scene in particular really shows why that old design would have really ruined this whole movie. The scene where Sonic is running in circles shows his face head on. And if we look closely, we can see his facial expressions shifting from anger to sadness and other emotions very rapidly. This is made very clear easily by the fact of his big expressive eyes. Not only that, but to be frank, Sonic uh, in his new design is rather cute. He's nice to look at and when he shows any emotion, you can really feel it. Compared to the old design, like just imagine them using it for this baseball scene. Ugh. That old face was nowhere near as expressive. It would be hard to tell, not necessarily impossible, but it just wouldn't work as well. And looking at the design head on would probably cause people to go into a fight or flight mode, most likely flight. The design alone would have ruined this movie. I don't think I would have been invested in the character if he looked like this. Anyway, moving on, Sonic caused a blackout and after his outburst, uh, it caused the military to get involved because the military needs to stick their nose in everything. They bring in Dr. Robotnik because he's really the only man who can do the job, at least according to them. We are introduced to Robotnik and he basically acts like... 90s Jim Carrey. He's goofy, he does many odd facial expressions, the whole package. I might have a controversial opinion here, but I'm honestly not exactly the biggest fan of this version of Eggman. I know it was kind of a return to form for Carrey, and many people enjoyed that, but I don't know much about Carrey other than The Truman Show, which I really do like The Truman Show, but aside from that, I'm not familiar with the man. I also don't really find the scenes with Carrey to be all that funny. Not to say there's no funny scenes, but many of them 
kind of fell flat for me. Like this segment here where he's like studying the quill. There's like this whole dance sequence and it really doesn't do it for me. Like I said, it's not like there's no funny moments. The part where he's talking on the phone with Tom was good. And when he throws the big buff guy out of the window, I just thought that was great. I just think overall, I wasn't the biggest fan. After Eggman starts looking for Sonic, the hedgehog takes refuge in Tom's shed, getting ready to leave until Tom fights and shoots him with the tranquilizer gun. This brings up another problem I kind of have. Sonic's powers are inconsistent. He's supposed to be ludicrously fast. Later in two instances, we can see him basically stop time, but then he gets shot by a dart. You can make the argument that Sonic was caught off guard, but this isn't the only instance this happens. Later, when Sonic gets a bomb off his hand, uh, he slowly walks away rather than, you know, running. It's not that big of a deal, but it did bother me a bit. Maybe they could have it where, like, Sonic can go into these time stop super speed moments, but it takes a lot out of him. Like, he gets really tired very quickly, just to kind of balance it out. Also, the way Sonic loses his rings is forced as crap. He sees San Francisco on Tom's shirt, opens a portal in the sky, uh, because I guess Sonic was heavily considering suicide in that very moment, and drops the rings through it. Once again, it's not that big of a deal, but maybe it would have been better if Sonic was thinking of going to a safe place because he's being hunted down and since San Francisco is so far away even if someone saw him he would be in like a different location and have more time to escape but then he gets like shot at by a drone who snuck up behind him causing him to drop the rings to well the ring after that then he goes and heads to Tom to take refuge in which Eggman follows still not perfect but I feel like it would be it feel less forced than what they went with this causes Sonic and Tom to team up after Tom punches Eggman and they go on a road trip the movie after the this point is Sonic and Tom simply going places as they make it to San Francisco as they grow closer as friends. Okay, I say various places, but it's really only like the bar. And after that, they're like best friends. The movie does admittedly have some pacing issues. Everything in this movie moves a little too fast, which, hey, you know, might be appropriate, but it does make the relationship between the characters a little flat. Like I said, Sonic and Tom basically become like best friends after the bar sequence. And then on the road, when Tom tells Sonic his dream of being a real cop sonic gets like very pissy about it i understand why sonic gets pissy it makes sense to an extent but one with how much sonic has been stalking the man i feel like he should have known this already and secondly the whole thing doesn't really go anywhere sonic's upset at tom for a little bit during the chase sequence he gets blown up and then after he gets the ring he's, he just forgives tom kind of makes the whole segment just kind of pointless it doesn't really go anywhere so even if it does necessarily make sense that sonic's upset at tom it just doesn't really add anything in the grand scheme of things there's not even like a one of those moments where like the characters split apart no he's just kind of mad for a little bit this is what i mean when i say like a lot of the parts of the movie feels too fast this could have been a little bit more fleshed out or maybe just handled a lot better but it's not given the time to anyway after sonic destroys eggman's vehicles like three times that was a great chase sequence by the way i really like how just the machine was absolutely relentless and how every time they destroyed it a smaller one would come out it was very funny really let both both Sonic and Tom shine. Well, mostly Sonic. Tom just kind of smacks the thing. Sonic is brought to Pretzel Lady, who wakes up Sonic, and they both head to the Pointy Tower in San Francisco. After we get there, Sonic and Tom get ready to say their goodbyes as Sonic prepares to head to the Mushroom Kingdom. But then Robotnik shows up to finally catch Sonic. Using the quill, he's able to catch up to Sonic's speed, which leads to another great chase sequence. This movie has a lot of great uh, sequences like that. And after running around the world, they end up back at Green Hill, and it's suddenly night. They must have been running for a very long time. After Sonic gets knocked out, Tom yells at Eggman, claiming Sonic to be a friend. That, of course, causes Sonic to wake up and just wreck Eggman shit, in which Tom opens a portal to the Mushroom Planet, sending away Eggman. Tom gives Sonic a high five, which is a nice way to tie back to the baseball scene. Uh, finishing his arc along with Tom's arc, which, um... Now that I think about it, what was Tom's arc? He wants to go to San Francisco to become a real cop, but after helping Sonic, he just decides not to? I guess it's like, you know, this town is like his home, but like he said early in the movie, anyone can do what the town folk ask him to do. There's nothing that really suggests that this town is all that special to Tom or the townspeople. Like, we don't really get any moments between any of them. I don't know, it just kind of seems out of nowhere. Tom and Pretzel Lady adopt Sonic, and they all live happily ever after, except for Eggman, who's looking for a way home. Tails is also here looking for Sonic, and that was the Sonic movie. It was fine i do have to admit on revisiting the movie the flaws stick out to me a lot more the pacing is its biggest issue 
plot threads come and go, things get wrapped up really fast, and it just, things I don't feel like get fleshed out nearly as much as they should. And I don't necessarily mean like Sonic World stuff, I mean like between the characters' relationships. You know, I feel like that should have been maybe a bigger focus overall, to, to really drive home like the, the whole plot of Sonic making a friend. Uh, there, there's a lot of moments where it feels like forced conflict just to get the plot to work. The comedy was a uh, hit and miss, nothing too bad, and I do think the good jokes outweigh the bad, but still, despite all those flaws though, the movie is still good overall. I do like Sonic's story, as rushed as it may feel, his situation, his journey, his ending. I like his character. He's more emotional than Sonic usually is, but he still has that trademark sass, especially when he's interacting with Eggman. He's easily the best part of the film. That being said, I still do wish there was more elements from the game that were in the movie. It seems like that's what the sequel will be, and, you know, maybe they did this to ease audiences into Sonic's world, but I don't think that's really necessary. I mean, movies have whack job premises all the time. Why does Sonic need to be in eased into compared to something like Monsters Incorporated? They don't ease you in, they just throw you into that stuff. But that's focusing on what could have been. But we got was good. And you know what? For the track record a video games movie had been up to this point, good is basically a masterpiece. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.